हेलो माई सर नवीन कुमार सैनी इन द कोर्स इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फील्ड थ्योरी कोड के ई ई थ्री जीरो वन सो वी आर इन द यूनिट टू वे आर वी हैव स्टार्ट द इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फील्ड इन दैट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट बिहाइंड इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल सो इन दैट इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल वाट वी हैव द मेन थिंग इज फर्स्ट थिंग इज वी हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल वी बी कैलकुलेटेड वेन वी हैव ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ओके सो इन दैट वी हैव द वैक्टर फील्ड सो दिस वैक्टर फील्ड इज दिस इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड सो वी हैव वी कैन एज्यूम इट द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज जनरेटेड दिस इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज जनरेटेड बाई द एग्जिस्टिंग सोर्स सो सोर्स मे बी प्रेजेंट समवेयर मे बी एट द ऑरिजिन ऑफ एनी कॉर्डिनेट सिस्टम और एनी अदर प्लेस सो दिस इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड is a spawn uh, is generated by the one source and what we are doing we are moving from one point to another point into the electric field so suppose we have at the electric field a so uh, i mean the point a at which we are standing and now we are moving from point a to the point b okay so the total length of this uh, the distance is from a to b so electric uh, potential is nothing but this is the work done by moving uh, from point a to point b by the point charge so in this way so it is based on the coulomb's law where the force on q that is as we are aware about that f is equal to q into e so that the work done is in displacing the charge by the dl distance okay so we have assumed that this is our dl distance so for that uh, work done will be equal to f dot dl so the force is exerted on to the system right so this f is equal to q into e into dl so in this way we can find the what is the total work done so this total work done will be equal to we have to integrate this portion that is e dot dl so this portion a to b so this is the total work done so important point in this case is to know that a is the origin from where we have started and b is the destination so in the lower limit is the origin and the b at the upper limit will be the destination so this is the total work done when we are moving the charge any charge q into the existing electric field right so this is the total work done so in this way the potential will be defined as the work done per unit charge so that is why uh, we are using the w upon q so this is the work done per unit charge so that is equivalent to the minus sign e dot dl from a to b so this is the potential when uh, when we are moving from one point to one point a to one point b so as we are aware that the electric field is this one for the point charge that is q upon 4 pi epsilon not r square ar so in this way we can put the value of electric field in the previous expression which uh, we have just discussed so as we are aware that uh, vab which is equal to the minus sign e dot dl and this is the a to b so we will put this value e into uh, into this expression so we will get the q upon 4 pi epsilon not r square into ar so this ar is nothing but this is a direction okay so this direction is the r so this direction is the r for the this particular dl and the position vector for a is the r a and position vector for b is the r b okay so that is why we have uh, written like this so this direction dl is nothing but dr ar okay because this uh, direction we are taking the ar so this ar if ar is here then ar we have to take it here but if you are aware about the coordinate system which we have discussed already that total dl will be equal to dr ar sorry r plus r d theta a theta plus r sin theta uh, d phi okay so this is the total dl in the spherical coordinate system but we have taken the electric field in the direction of ar so that is why we are taking the dl as the dr ar so it means there is no dx d theta and the d phi so when we integrate this then the vab will be equal to the so this vab potential between the point a and b is equal to q upon 4 pi epsilon not 1 Upon R B minus one upon R A, 
so when we combine this when we multiply inside this one so this value will be become what q upon 4 pi epsilon naught rb minus q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught ra okay so this is nothing but this is the potential uh, for the at the point p b minus the potential at the point a okay so that is the definite uh, this is derivation of v a b potential difference between the two points uh, so v b is the potential difference potential at the destination point b and minus potential at the origin point a so if we have a a is zero so when a will be zero so this will be zero when r a that is tends to infinity it means that when the origin is at the infinity it means we are bringing the charge from infinity to the point b then v a b will be equal to the v b right second point yeah so just for generalized way we have written that r b is tends to r then due to the point charge q which is located at the origin so it means this q charge is responsible for generation of the electric field so v will, will be equal to q upon 4 pi epsilon naught r so that uh, the point which is very important to know so again uh, q is a charge which is responsible for generation of the electric field and in that electric field we are bringing the charge from the infinity to the point at a distance of r right so this potential will become q upon 4 pi epsilon naught r so so this is the expression which we just said that from infinite to r distance so e dot dl now suppose uh, the, elect the point q charge in the previous case we said the q charge is placed at the origin now if the q charge this q charge is not placed at the origin it is some another distance that is the r dash so this expression the previous expression this will become in place of r we will put the r minus r dash okay so this is the r minus r dash uh, so this is the magnitude so uh, in this way we can uh, define the potential when the q charge is not placed at the at the origin it is placed some of the distance of r dash okay then uh, similar to that when we are using the principle of superposition so in this way we have distributed n point charges so this n point charges are q1 q2 up to qn which are located at uh, different positions vectors these are the r1 r2 and rn so the potential at the point r due to different point charges is vr will be equal to q1 upon 4 uh, r minus r1 okay so r1 is the position vector of the charge q1 similar to that r2 is the position vector for the charge q2 and rn is the position vector for the charge qn and this r is the position at which we want to find the potential so it will be the r minus r1 r minus r2 and the r minus rn so when we combine suppose we have the uh, point charges so in the point charges uh, we can write this expression like this v r is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught because this point charges are discrete in nature so in this that is why the potential will be equal to with this summation k is equal to 1 to n q k upon r minus r k so this r k represent the position vector of the charge q k so when we have the charge distributions so in that charge distribution uh, as we have discussed in the previous lecture as well uh, in place of q when we have the line charge so line charge uh, is there then in that case in place of q as we are aware if you remember that uh, q is equal to that is equal to rho l into dl so this is the case uh, when we have the line charge density q will become rho s into ds when we have the surface charge density and next is when we have uh, so when we have the volume charge so this will be and the volume charge we have the rho v into dv right so what we have done we have simply put in place of q k that is the rho l into r dash so this line charge is placed at the location uh, position vector of r dash then uh, rho s r s so this r s again this is a position vector for the surface charge density rho s like the surface and similar to that rho v that is equal to uh, rho v r dash this is a uh, uh, this is a volume 
volume charge density which is placed at the position of R. So, in this way when we have a different charge distributions uniformly distribution. So, uh, we can find the potential at the some location R. Okay, I, I thought uh, I think uh, this point is clear to all of you. So, there is some relation between the electric field and the uh, potential. So, this will give the another Maxwell equation. So, in the first Maxwell equation if you remember we have discussed that uh, in the first Maxwell equation that was the del dot d is equal to rho v. So, this was the first Maxwell equation. Now, we will discuss about the second Maxwell equation. So, for that what we are doing? We are using the concept of the uh, potential. So, in which we are saying the elect already existing electric field is there. So, the source for the electric field is the charge. So, that charge may be the line charge, surface charge, volume charge or the point charge. Okay. But now we are moving from the, we are carrying the charge, uh, unit charge from the position A to the position B. So, this is the path from A to B and then again we are going back from B to A. So, this is a closed path, right. So, this is a closed path. So, in this way if you see the potential uh, from A to B will be what? VBA, right and uh, B, uh, VBA and the VAB. So, we can define that uh, in this way the VBA will be equal to the minus of VAB. Okay, A to B is a VAB and B to A this is a VBA. So, when we combine this, I mean taking this in the left hand side. So, this is the left hand side and this total uh, potential will be the closed path E dot dl, right. So, as you remember V was equal to if you remember that the formula was this E dot dl for the one path when we are moving from point A to B. So, this is the point A to B. Now, we are, uh, so this is the case for that A to B. Now, we are moving from B to A, from B to A. So, in this case, this, this will become the closed path. So, that is why they have taken the E dot dl that is equal to 0. So, VBA plus VAB. So, you can put the value of VBA from here. So, minus VBA, it will be the minus VBA is equal to the 0. So, E dot dl is equal to 0. So, this is for the closed path. Okay, so this is one of the expression which we got. Now uh, we can solve uh, further this one. So e dot dl is equal to zero, right? This is a closed path. So now we, we can we can apply the Stokes theorem. So what is that Stokes theorem? If uh, uh, you are remember, I will mention it again. That e dot dl closed path, right? That is equal to the closed path equivalent to the open surface. So open surface del cross E into D S right. So, del cross E into D S. So, just uh, simply we will put in place of this, uh, we will put the right hand side of this one. So, this equation will become like this and that is equal to 0. So, when we compare it del cross E dot D S. So, D S cannot be 0. So, it means del cross E will be 0 and this is the second second Maxwell's equation. So, this is the second Maxwell's equation in the uh, electric field, static electric field, right. So, this is very important feature of, uh, I mean very important relation in the, uh, between the E and V. So, which we got it from here. So, which gives the Maxwell's equation, second Maxwell's equation. So, the relation for finding the relation between E and V, we have one of the derivation for that that v is equal to minus e dot dl which we are uh, right now we have uh, we we got it and we can take the differentiation of this equation so we will get the dv is equal to minus e dot dl so in place of e we can uh, so simply we can put it that e dot dl so this is equivalent to this so how we get that uh, we can use it here that e that is equal to ex ax plus ey ay plus E z E z and D L in, in this is the differential length in the Cartesian coordinate system. So, this value will be D x A x plus D y A y plus D z A z. Okay. So, when we put these two things uh, here in your D L then we will get this expression e dot dx because this is the this is the multiplication 
ए एक्स कॉम्पोनेंट विल मल्टीप्लाई विद दिस ए एक्स कॉम्पोनेंट ए वाई कॉम्पोनेंट विल मल्टीप्लाई विद दिस ए वाई कॉम्पोनेंट ए जेड कॉम्पोनेंट विल मल्टीप्लाई विद द ए जेड कॉम्पोनेंट रेस्ट विल बी द जीरो बिकॉज ए एक्स डॉट ए वाई विल बी द बिकॉज दिस ऑर्थोगनल इन नेचर सो दैट इज द ए एक्स डॉट ए वाई विल बी जीरो ए एक्स डॉट ए जेड विल बी जीरो एंड ए वाई सिमिलर टू दैट ए वाई ए एक्स जीरो ए जेड ए एक्स जीरो एंड सो ऑन so in this way uh, when we solve it then we will get this equation that ex dx minus dy uh, ey dy minus ez dz again we can use uh, for this total differentiation that is equivalent to del v upon del x dx plus del v upon del y dy plus del v upon del z dz so what we can do we can compare this equation you can say this is equation number 1 and this is the equation number 2 so just compare it uh, with the the with comparison with the dx so when you compare these two then we will get the minus ex is equal to del v upon del x or ex is equal to minus del v upon del x ey is equal to minus del v upon del y ez is equal to del v upon del z so uh, when we combine these equations then we will get uh, this equation will become what e is equal to minus gradient of the v okay so we can uh, we can get this one that uh, this is a ex plus a ex ax plus ey ay plus ez az okay so this is equivalent to minus of del upon del x ax okay so uh, del upon del x ax plus del upon del y e y plus del upon del z e z into v so this uh, this one is equivalent to this e and this one is nothing but this is the del and v is here okay so in this way we get this one of the very important result which relates the electric field and the potential uh, that is given the e is equal to minus of del v okay so uh, okay so this is one of the example of the gradient if we want to find the gradient so this uh, electric field will be equal to the minus of gradient of v v is the potential next topic which is again very important that is the elect uh, energy density energy density in the electrostatic field so the concept we must know about that the how to find the energy so what is the meaning of the energy uh, in the in this electrostatic field is that when we have any other volume in that volume we want to put all the charges all together so total charge when we calculate that so i mean what are the energies required what is the work have to done to store the complete charge into the given volume so that is the energy we have to find so for that i mean total work done to store the, all the charges into the uh, given area or the volume so what we will do first we will uh, Uh, right now you can think of that this complete volume is nothing but this is the some uh, something like empty free space right first assume that second is now we will start we will start placing the charges into this volume into this volume so just for example uh, if we are bringing the charge from the first thing we will do we will bring the charge from infinite so suppose i am taking this example again from the infinite i am bringing the charge here at this point p1 okay so this is the charge q1 okay so this q1 charge is placed right now at this point now again i am bringing the charge q2 okay so this is a point p2 so this q2 charge is placed so we can see here that when this, there was a free space so this q1 charge was placed into this region and there is no work is required to do against any of the charge which is present which is present so when the q1 was present so no charge was present so that is why q1 doesn't require any work to do against any charge okay so when the second case q2 is placing into this region so what will happen q1 charge is already present when the q1 charge is present then the q2 charge has to do some work against q1 charge so that this q2 charge can be placed into this region okay now when the third charge is placed here so q3 charge we are bringing from the infinite and it is placing at the point 3 okay so this q3 charge have to do work against the q1 and the q2 i i hope this point is clear 
so first we are bringing the charge q1 when there is nothing was there so there was no work required to do uh, for the charge q1 to place into the region when the q1 is placed then we are bringing the q2 charge into that particular region where the q1 charge already present so it means q2 charge has to do some work against q1 now next is the q3 charge when the q3 charge is placing from uh, we are bringing from the infinite into that region then q3 charge has to do some work against the q1 charge and the q2 charge and the reverse order because if q3 charge has to do some work against q1 and q2 so it means the q1 charge has to do some work against q2 and q3 and q2 charge has to do some work against q1 and q3 and so on so that is why what we are doing uh, we are bringing in the first case when we are bringing the charge from the q1 q2 q3 uh, bring charge q1 q2 q3 in this region so it means the work done for the charge q1 is w1 work done for the charge q2 is a w2 and for the charge q3 w3 so when there is no work is required for the q1 it means the work is zero now the q1 charge is placed right so at this point the q1 charge is placed now we are bringing the charge q2 so it means q2 charge has to do some work against q1 so this guy has to do work against q1 to stay there so uh, what uh, this formula will become q2 this is a q2 charge we are bringing from the infinite and v21 is the potential or the potential difference between the q1 and q2 right then uh, q2 charge is placed now the q3 charge we are bringing from the infinite and we are putting into the q3 so it means the q3 has to do some work against q1 and q2 it means when we are talking about the work it means there is some potential difference between the charge q1 and q2 so that is why the q3 charge is a uh, we are placing this q3 charge into the region and this q3 charge has to do some work against the charge q1 and the charge q2 that is why the potential difference occurs into that now as i said uh, this uh, this is the first case when we are talking the q1 q2 q3 are placing now q2 has to do some work against q1 q3 have to do some work against q3 q1 and q2 so it is not mentioned here so what we will do we will take the reverse order of that one then in this case the first we will do the q3 charge we are placing first then q2 charge and then the q1 charge so when again when there is a empty space we are bringing the q3 charge we are bringing the q3 charge from infinite to this place so it means this uh, q3 charge doesn't require to do any work against any other charge because nothing is there so free space then we are bringing so okay sorry this is a from infinite now we are bringing the q2 charge and then we are bringing the q1 charge so in this case what will happen we because there is no work done is required for the q3 charge so this is the zero now the second work done is required because q3 is already placed and we are bringing the q2 right now so q2 into v23 is there right so this uh, v23 is the potential difference between the charge q2 uh, and the charge 3 now the q w1 uh, is the work done when we are bringing the q1 charge and already q2 and 2 and 3 these two charges are placed so it means the work has to be done against the q2 charge and then the q3 charge so that is why we when we combine these two work done we from here and w3 and we from here so what we will get we will combine it we add these two equations then we will get the 2 we is equal to this much so when we are solving this in we are adding this then q1 will be out and then it is the v12 plus v13 and for q2 this is the v21 plus v23 and uh, for q3 v31 plus v32 so this combined v12 and v13 is nothing but the v1 and here v21 plus v23 is nothing but the v2 and v31 plus v32 is the v3 so in this way we can find this equation that w uh, 2we is equal to the v1 q1 q1 v1 q2 v2 and q3 v3 so uh, in this way we will become what this is a 1 by 2 this expression is we are getting so these are the point charges when we are talking about the three point charges right so we will have the n number of point charges and we are bringing those charges from infinite to that particular region so in this way for the point charge we will have a we is equal to 1 by 2 from here and q1 q uh, q1 v1 q2 v2 q3 v3 q4 v4 and so on 
so when we sum up all these things then we will get the discrete values that is a qk into vk okay so 1 by 2 sigma k is equal to 1 to infinite qk into vk so this is the total work done required to stay uh, to is uh, required to stay into the reason in a given volume of all these point charges right so they have to do some work in that way so similarly when we have different point charges now we will have the uh, line uh, so line charges surface charge and volume charges means when we have the uh, different uniformly distributed charge uh, charges means when you have the line charge so in place of q we as i had just mentioned previously that in the line charge q that is equal to rho l into dl for the surface charge q will be equal to rho s into ds and for the volume charge this q will be equal to uh, this is rho v into d okay so in place of q in this expression we can put uh, rho l into dl or we can put surface uh, in place of q we can put the rho s into ds or q when we have the volume charge density then q will be written as the rho v into dv i hope this point is clear so just put all this uh, then because we have the this integration so this integration we will use it and the work done we can get it from here okay so this is the first part of this uh, derivation of the energy finding the energy of the point charge and for the surface charge so we can solve it for the so for that one what we are doing we are using this equation okay so we are using this equation and we will put the maxwell's first equation so what is the maxwell's first equation i will write it here that is del dot d is equal to rho v so this is the maxwell's first equation and in place of rho v we will put the del dot d so we will start from here right so now we can see that w e that is equal to 1 by 2 del dot e into v dv okay so in place this is what this is nothing but the rho v so rho v into dv so uh, okay so now uh, for any vector uh, vector a and the scalar we have uh, this expression which is the identity vector identity del dot v into a v is the scalar field and a is a vector field so this is nothing but the a dot product with the gradient of v plus v scalar field is the divergence of the vector a so just simply put all all these things together so in place of d we can a we can use the d in place of a we can use the d in place of a we can use the d so which expression we are getting from here so we are getting this one so this is equal to this uh, this one minus this so we are putting all these things here so when we put uh, then we will get in place of this this one okay i i hope this point is clear the next is uh, when we apply the divergence theorem uh, where the divergence theorem we, we, we will apply divergence theorem we will apply here because we have the del dot d right in the volume so we have to convert it into the surface closed surface so when we apply that then uh, we will become this much v into d dot ds minus 1 by 2 d dot dv so this expression is as it is but we have applied the divergence theorem here divergence theorem for this case so because we have discussed already what the divergence theorem and how to apply that so this expression you can write correctly okay so now uh, in the last slide we can see that w e is equal to minus 1 by 2 okay d dot uh, del v is okay so why we are getting this uh, we are getting this one only here so this is we have removed this sorry we have removed this one why we have removed this this is the, uh, this is the thing which we have to take care of ds is the surface area so this expression for the large surface area when we have a large surface area so what is the value of v and d okay so in this uh, we can see for the large for large surface area it means surface area is become maybe infinite you can say surface area so as we know that v is equal to 1 upon r and d that is equal to 1 upon r square is equal to 1 upon r square so when you see then when the uh, for the large surface area means r uh, s is very large so you can say the 
radius will be very large when the surface area is very large then r will be very large when the r is large then v will be very small the v will become very small and again d will become very small so it means the v into d is proportional to 1 upon r cube so it means when r is very large it means the v into d is very small so that is why for the large uh, surface area this will become been neglected to zero okay so when this is zero so we can put it uh, the w is equal to this much okay so this is nothing but this is the uh, we are aware that del v is equal to e so just put the del v is equal to v and the uh, d is equal to epsilon naught e so when we put all together then w e will become the 1 by 2 integration d dot e dot dv is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon e square so this is nothing but this is the uh, total energy is given and the energy density we can find out when we divide the work done with the dv so when we divide it then we will get the complete energy density which is the joule per meter cube so unit here this is the joule so this is the joule and energy density will become joule per meter cube okay so i hope this point is clear to all of you please go through it practice it then only you can understand what is the concept behind the energy density thank you very much